Hey, it's Whitney from EcoVeganGal.com and welcome back to the EVG Uncensored channel in which I share my thoughts, opinions, feelings on various aspects of life. And today's video is all about, how do I say this? Committing to things, going for the gold, following your deepest passion, doing things that you truly love to do and not just going through the motions or you know, not fully committing to something. I think this is a really great time of year to discuss this because it's the beginning of a whole new year. People are setting resolutions, giving a lot of thought to the, to topics like this. And it's an interesting time of year because I don't know about you, but I've, I've felt kind of this energy... Either it's new or I've just tuned into it, that there's kind of this expectation and this, I was going to say, accept. It's expected and accepted that we are going to give up on resolutions. So we try to get into a new workout routine or a new diet, and then we give up on it in a few weeks. And, and not only is that, expected but it's accepted so it's acceptable to give up it's acceptable to kind of half-ass things not to give things your all not to be committed and it's fascinating because it's something that I can't entirely relate to right now in my life I understand there is a comfort within knowing that you don't have you're not kind of held accountable I have a mixed personality in that sense where there are certain things that I love to be held accountable for, but there are also times where I love the freedom to drop the ball on things. I found out in when this book that I was reading last year that I that's very typical of my personality where I try to do a thousand different things and then sometimes I just start a bunch of things but don't finish them <laughs> and it's in a way, nice and yet, like, not really good that <laughs> often I'm not held accountable. So it's okay for me to just experiment and try things and then just give up on most of them. That's not something that I want to continue doing this year. And it's something that I feel like at least the society and culture that I'm in in the U.S., and, and maybe this is true of most of the quote-unquote first world countries, here is that it's okay to just like try something and give up on it. For me though, it feels better to kind of identify with things that I really want to do um, before I start doing them and kind of get in touch with myself to see if it feels right. And perhaps it's just personal experience, but now I really can anticipate when something's going to feel right. And that's easier to start it and it's easier to finish it. So maybe it is just like that personal experience. But I also feel a certain level of frustration that so many people give up, seem to give up on things. And as I mentioned, it, it's, it's just so acceptable to do that. And I wonder sometimes if the fact that it is acceptable in our culture to give up you know, like the resolution. Oh, yeah. In a couple of weeks, you're probably not going to be doing this anymore. Like, yeah, yeah. Good luck with your new diet. It's not going to last. Like, and then it doesn't last. And everyone's like, it's, it's okay. It's okay. You tried. <laughs> but what if there was more consequence or pressure or expectation of succeeding and more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here is uh, reper not repercussions, but disappointment when you don't follow through with something. If perhaps our culture held people more accountable for their decisions, that we can't just try everything and give up ev anything that we want. And I've noticed this a lot in my life, that this has been happening for a while 
uh, as a kid, I would notice, for instance, that I would want to start a project and people would agree to do a project with me. And I felt like I was carrying most of the weight and doing most of the work. And this is actually hap- still continues to this day. I, I'm, I'm better at choosing the right people to work with. But I've noticed that I'm often the type that kind of goes the extra mile and 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 really gives it my all. And it's more common to find that other people are, are not quite doing the same thing. They'll do a lot. They'll do just enough to get by. And I've seen this kind of running thing. I remember in college too, or almost any time that I've been in any sort of like graded environment or co- competitive environment that most people around me would not quite be giving it their all. And it's interesting because it's an advantage to be the type of person that gives it your all because that usually gives you a very high chance of success, of winning, if you want to call it that. If you want to call it going, going for the gold, you know, you have a higher chance of getting the gold if most people are going for silver, bronze, or not really going for any, any of the medals there. But it's also kind of lonely, and it's, it's kind of sad I felt a lot of loneliness in my life and frustration that people around me weren't giving it their all because it, it brings down the energy of things. So not only are you alone at the top if you get there eventually when you do get there, but you almost, or what I felt a lot is that it could have been even higher. It could have even been even more rewarding. It could have been even bigger and more successful had more people been involved with the success and giving it their all, if we'd all kind of pulled our our weight equally. And it's just, it's just sort of interesting. Like perfect example for me is, is just kind of the vegan movement is that if everybody was super committed to it and really giving it their all and really like exploring it and being committed to it we would make so much more progress as a society because we wouldn't be giving up on it so easily collectively whereas now it's acceptable it's like oh yeah I've tried the vegan diet and it's like how many times have I heard that I hear that so much oh I tried but then I started going back to eggs or then I went back to meat or, you know, on and on there. And you just feel like, did you really fully try? Or was part of you always kind of thinking about, you know, your parachute? Is that the word I wanted? The, the term I wanted to use there. You know, your the safety net. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Is that you know that you could give up on something. Whereas for me, with the vegan lifestyle, I am absolutely not looking to ever give up on it. And I, in my head, sometimes I think, well, what if I was forced for whatever reason to give it up? Like, it would have to take, it would have to be such a drastic situation, like a life or death, death moment for me to make that big of a change. And it, it's interesting how so many people will just give up on something like that so easily. It's something that I just can't relate to. And because there's this level of acceptance for the fact that people give up, perhaps people just give up more frequently. Whereas what if we were at a point where, you know, all the animals were endangered and we we had to go vegan and, and if we chose to go back to being vegetarian or or completely carnist, it would destroy whatever else, right? Like, do we need to have that much of a drastic situation? And and part of me believes that the answer is yes, is that most humans tend to only do things when they absolutely have to or they deeply, deeply want to. But the problem that I've seen throughout my whole life is that for whatever reason, there isn't that, there's a kind of a lack of passion, I've seen this so much with my classmates throughout high school and through college is that many people that I grew up, I went to school with and grew up with 
haven't aren't really living the most fulfilled lives that they could be and they don't seem as as fulfilled they don't seem as happy they don't feel as satisfied they're definitely not doing the things that they said they were going to do when we were back in school whereas for me i i feel very fulfilled and I feel like things just keep getting better and better. And, and I, I see that kind of contrast in our conversations and our lifestyles and all of that. And, and I wonder sometimes why they're not doing the things that they set out to do. What got in their way, really? And, and what excuses they're allowing themselves to have? You know, well, I'm not doing this because blah, blah, blah. Like, I hear that all the time. And, and I'll have these conversations with people and... and there's this level of it's acceptable to give up on their dreams. And that makes me really sad. What happened to giving it your all? All Do some people just not know how to give it their all? That's what I wonder. And how is it that I learned that? Even growing up in the same town as some kids, what was the biggest difference? We went to the same school. We had the same teachers. We studied the same things. And in college, you know, as filmmakers, we had exposure to the same resources. But what makes one person able to dedicate their lives to a career and, and another person kind of half acid and, and give up or settle for jobs or opportunities that just weren't quite what they wanted? What makes someone reach for the stars, go for the gold, and, and another person just accept the bronze or accept 10th place, you know? Is it that it's just acceptable to not do so well? I don't have an answer to any of this. I just find it really fascinating. And it's not meant to be from a judgmental perspective because it is what it is. People live the way that they want to live. I, you know, I'm focused on myself and, and the joys that I get out of my life choices. But the only thing that I hesitate with is that a lot of people just are held, holding on to so much fear and fear gets in the way of so much and comfort in settling, I guess. I don't find that comforting at all. <laughs> and it's fascinating, too, that we have these different levels of comfort. You can be unhappy but still be comfortable. You can be unhealthy but still be comfortable. To me, it's very different. Comfort is happiness. Comfort is health for me. And it's interesting because because comfort and happiness are one and the same. But I find that some people find that comfort doesn't need to be happy. Comfort can be unhappy. There's often that comfort level in, in not trying. And I think that's why so many people are unhealthy too. They're comfortable being unhealthy. Trying to be healthy is uncomfortable, at least temporarily. And it's too uncomfortable to even think about being uncomfortable. So they just don't try. And maybe I learned at a young age to be okay with being uncomfortable. I actually enjoy being uncomfortable. I find it a challenge. And I think that that's something I share with a lot of people that are focused on success is that being uncomfortable is not scary. It's exhilarating. It's, it's a sign that change is happening. Biologically and traditionally, evolutionarily, we, and just like most animals, resist change, resist risk. Perhaps because we're just afraid of what will happen if it goes wrong. But it's kind of like that quote that goes around about, I'd rather have a life of oh wells instead of a life of what ifs. 
And a lot of people live a life of what if. I don't really have that. I've had a lot of oh wells. <laughs> but I've also had a lot of whatever the opposite of oh well is. Oh yes, I guess. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if, if you would rather an oh well or a what if. If that's what it comes down to, if, if you're happy with being unhappy, if you're happy with being comfortable, if you're happy with what if, awesome. It's just not something that I can relate to and not something I really want in my life. You know, for me, 2015 is about surrounding myself with people that are going to help me reach what I want to reach and making an impact in the world and and I want to be surrounded by the oh well type of people, the, the uncomfortable people, the fearless people, the people that are going for the gold. I don't want to be surrounded by people that are wondering too many what ifs and are comfortable being comfortable. It's just not the energy I want. But I also feel that it's important for me to, to avoid being judgmental of, of people that choose the opposite that I do. You know, just, just as I try to be as non-judgmental as possible about people that choose not to be vegan, you know, it, life is so much about acceptance. But we can also choose to surround ourselves with the people that we really want to be around and, and kind of limit our exposure to people that... You know, we, maybe that sounds too harsh, and I, I don't mean it to in that kind of like exclusive or um, elitist way or, or any of that. I guess right now in my life, I just, especially when it comes to reaching goals, uh, those I want to be around the goal setters and the goal reachers, not the people that don't want goals at all. But maybe there's something to be learned from that. I think that diversity is really important in life. And I don't know, it's hard. It's actually really interesting. Even with the vegan versus non-vegan thing, I don't really find it that pleasant to, to be around people that are choosing to eat non-vegan food in front of me. But if we're doing something or talking about something unrelated to food and lifestyle, then they're they're still amazing. They can still be really amazing people. But what's interesting is, is I often find that the people that are, this is a huge judgment and a huge uh, generalization, just as a preface here, but I'm, I'm talking things out. I, I do find a huge correlation between people that are vegan and, ah, well, now I take this back. No, never mind. <laughs> I'm not even going to say that. I, I, I think that that's not necessarily true. I will say it this way. I, I find that people that are huge goal setters and very focused and driven and, and want to make the world a better place t tend to f frequently be vegan or some sort of offshoot of it. Not all of the case, not most of the case, but a lot of the case I see that, which is really interesting. I think the more I learn about veganism and, and the more that I connect to that lifestyle, I can see why, because it's challenging. It's not always comfortable. It takes a lot of work and dedication and passion. You have to really want to be vegan and understand why you're vegan and understand how it works in order to, to stick to it. And I hear a lot of excuses from people who aren't vegan. And it's, that's always fascinating to me. Because a lot of the excuses aren't too legitimate. They're just kind of excuses. And that's, not something I like to surround myself with. 
I like the the non vegans that I like are the people that own it. I choose not to be vegan. No excuses there, right? I just choose not to be. I can respect that a lot more than somebody who starts listing off all these excuses about why they're not. It's like, I've heard all every excuse in the book and most of them I feel like can be uh, disproven. So it's like, don't even bother. Like, Just tell me you like the taste of meat and you care more about meat than you do saving animals in the environment and, and potentially protecting your health. Fine. That's <laughs> your choice. Own it. Mm. Sometimes I don't know if, if these topics make sense or um, have a lot of value. <laughs> this one is, is very much a stream of consciousness. It's 2 a.m. And I felt the desire to really express all of this, but I also still feel a little... I'm still processing a lot of these things. So this is more of like a a processing <laughs> video here. Hmm. I don't know quite how to end this one, but thank you for watching. Suddenly feel very tired, so I'm going to get ready for bed and read a little bit, go to bed and wake up and back at it tomorrow. No excuses, just full on ready to tackle the world and make a difference and uh, surround myself with as many people who are after the same thing as possible so that I can get charged and we can all make a difference together. But I guess the closing words would be, you know, part of the reason I wanted to share this was that I really want to inspire all of you to, to consider any excuses you might make in life and consider the, the fact that you are fully capable of achieving anything that you want in life. And there are certainly obstacles to pretty much everything. And there, of course, exceptions of things in life that may be literally impossible or, or very rare instances of success, depending on our situation. But that doesn't mean you can't go for them. And everybody loves a good success story. Everyone loves a story of somebody defeating the odds. What we don't really love, generally, is people that use too many excuses. It's boring. It's uninteresting. Unless you're looking for someone to relate to. But I challenge you to just go for it, to go for the gold, to really find that thing in life that lights your fire and just go for it. Even if it means starting from scratch, even if it means years of work and investment and so many things. You do have it there. And the world needs more people that just get into that determination mode. That is how the biggest change happens. Change takes commitment and progress. And here we are in a whole new world with, with so many things. You know, we, we can look at the news and, and find it so depressing, but almost everything that's happening in the world can be shifted with the right amount of determination because determination will lead to a solution somewhere. You might not be able to get something done on your own, but you'll start to attract people that can help you along your journey. And, and that's why I'm saying for me, it's so important to surround myself with other powerful, like-minded people because I, I believe in that, the, the collective power of it all. I feel dragged down by the excuse makers and the what ifers, but I feel lifted up by the oh wellers. And I feel, <laughs> and even the word oh well or the phrase oh well is not really that great, but in the context of that quote, it makes sense. I just, 
I think if even if just we, those of you watching right now, and being part of the conversation on a regular basis, I mean, there's so much power within this group here on this channel that collectively, energetically, the way that we come together through these videos and these comments and these conversations is, is really amazing. If we keep growing that, who knows what will come out of it. So just don't give up. Just go for it. Find a way. There is always a way when there is the will. And as my mom always said, if you want to, you will. So find out what that want, that deep want is. And don't let anything get in the way of your, the will to, to have it there, to make it happen. It sounds so cliche sometimes, but wow, it's like simply hearing those words sometimes can spark something within the, us and, and we just have to push through push through those uncomfortable things and just just go for it the world just needs you it really does there aren't enough of of people out there doing that so be part of the change no matter what it is that you're trying to change whether it's just yourself or whether it's a cause or whatever you're trying to achieve like you have no idea how rare that is and maybe you do so go after it Thank you for listening and thanks for taking this in. Thanks for being a part of all of this. Even if you're just beginning on, on some journey and this is just part of that inspiration that may lead you to doing something years from now. If I can just help light that fire, then I've really achieved something that I'm really excited about. So thank you wherever you are in your life. Thank you for being here. And I believe in you. I'm here to support you. And with that, I'll see you next time.